How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs, and today I want to show you how to permanently mount your Starlink unit on your roof. Now, each one of these installs is going to be a little bit different as you need to account for your roof line, trees, chimneys, or other obstructions. But at least this example should get you well down the road of getting your unit installed at your house. As you are probably well aware, there's a few different options when it comes to the actual mounting base. I'll be going with what's called the volcano mount that you can get from Starlink comes with everything you need to go ahead and get that installed on your roof and then start routing your wire into your house. We'll start off by just talking about planning the path of your wire. You definitely don't wanna be jumping up on the roof and sinking lag bolts through the plywood until you know exactly where you want the ethernet cable to go to fit your actual install. So we'll talk about planning, then we'll go through the install on my roof line. There's a few different products I'm gonna to use to try to keep everything watertight and secure. One of those is I am using a cover that you usually see used on boats to get wires through bulkheads and keep it watertight. And then finally, we'll do another speed test. If you haven't seen my first video right here, this goes through my initial just setup where I put it out in the grass and I established the connection. At that time, it was March 2021, we're about three weeks after that right now in April 2021, I was getting 40 megabytes download, 10 megabytes upload, and almost 40 milliseconds for my latency. So we'll see if that has improved at all already, and I would expect it to dramatically improve in the future. So let's jump in and start talking about planning out that path of the ethernet cable. So a couple basics to consider when you're planning out your path. First off, you have 100 foot of cable to work with. This cable has all the integrated parts you need and is permanently fixed to the Starlink unit itself. Two, you need at least a three quarter inch hole to pass the ethernet cable through and get it inside your house. Now this scrap piece of wood has a one inch diameter hole and that is plenty to pass the cable through. Then once I have the cable completely ran through and in place, I'll just take the cover, slip it over the cable, and then tighten up the four mounting screws. Then I'll have a nice water type entry point into my house where I'm not kinking the cable too much because it has plenty of room inside that hole to actually come into the house. And also the cable is going vertically down so it'll have a nice tendency to drip water down opposed to let, letting water drip inside and trying to come within your home. So knowing that, let's talk about some of the paths you can take inside your home. Options you have if you're going to mount on the roof is running on the outside and going low through your home. This is an example of that type of install. So I was thinking to install the Starlink, let's say right here. So Starlink installed, but I didn't really love messing with this chimney and having that close and possibly being a, an obstruction. But what that would have put me is running my ethernet down through this inside corner here. So I would have ran it all the way down behind the AC unit there and then probably tucked it under here because I had an old access point right in this area, which this is your rim joist and I have a basement. So I would have been coming in through drilling a three quarter or one inch hole through the rim joist, coming in the basement and starting my routing. Two things, I didn't want to mess with the chimney and I didn't like that much routing on the ex exterior. So instead of going low, let's talk about the going high option. Taking a little different look at the roof line, this was option one, was over here. I'll change it white, but this would have been option one for Starlink. Instead, I installed it over here where I could then run my cable a short distance. So the cable's running across the asphalt shingles here and then loops right down and goes high through the attic space. So that is the install I took. I took option two, it's less routing exterior on the exterior. Obviously, there's more additional things to do on the interior, and that is what I'm going to walk you through now is that full install and how I went about it, what parts I used, and just lessons learned. Now, Starlink recommends I use the longer lag bolts and the two center bolts here and hit a rafter. Instead, I'm going to use this piece of 2x12 and position it between my rafters so now all six lag bolts have something more than just the OSB sheathing to sink into. 
Then I just drilled one 5.30 seconds pilot hole. You can see it right there. And then from the outside, I could find that pilot hole right here and then align my volcano mount to drill all six pilot holes. Now, whenever you're working on the roof, obviously safety is first. So please be careful, take all precautions needed so you can do this job safely. Starlink does help you out a bit with a little sack there that you can put the Starlink unit and also the 100 foot of cable in while you're climbing up on the roof. Now I'll take the volcano mount and I'll position over the pilot hole and drill those six pilot holes and once you have your pilot hole set, then you take each of those small little patches, roll them in a ball, and then apply those around each of the pilot holes, making sure you're completely cover and go well beyond each pilot hole. Once you have all six in place, then you use the larger patches for the top and the bottom, and then take your volcano mount, line that up with your pilot holes, and then sink the two longer lag bolts in the center. Now I'm tightening it down to about 90% here with the impact driver. And then I'm gonna come back through and just by hand tighten those so I can make sure they're all tight and also they're not stripped out. Then once you get them all tight, you'll want to see that the sealant is actually squishing out from under the volcano mount. Additionally, it's nice to see it coming out from the actual lag bolts themselves, which gives me confidence that this should seal well and I won't have water leaks. The only thing that I'll probably come back to and seal right here in the middle to make sure water doesn't get under the bracket there and cause a leak. Now, once you have it secured, you'll take your actual star link You'll set it in, it'll clip into place, and now it's, it's secure. And now you have your 100 foot of cord, and I'll just stretch this out to make sure I don't have any tangles in there before fishing it inside the house. Then I am going to make a small loop here and secure that with zip ties, and that's a service loop. So if I ever need to take off the Starlink and do any service to it, I have a little bit of wire to play with, before I would reach the end of what's going into the house. Then I'll take one of those routing clips and secure it to the outside board, and then an additional one on the vertical surface. Now I did leave some slack because I did not want the internet cable rubbing on the edge of the asphalt shingles, because over time that would cause a failure in the cable as the shingles move slightly. And now I'm going to route the cable running along the edge of the fascia a little bit lower on the wall and then mount a routing clip to secure it to the vinyl siding. Once I have that, now I'm gonna position my one inch diameter hole so I can start to fish the cable into the attic space. Now, once that hole is done, make sure that the end of your internet cable is covered with electrical tape and then go ahead and fish that into the space which I have about 90 foot here that I'm putting into the attic. Then when you get all that fished in, I am going to make a small loop here because again, I wanna make sure if any water gets on this cable, it drips down opposed to wanting to come into the attic space. And then additionally, I'll put this cover, which has four mounting screws. If you want to know that exact cover, just look down in the description, you'll see a link to the exact product I used on Amazon. So the final routing isn't perfect, obviously, but it'll fit my needs and it should be watertight. So now I'm ready to start completing the routing on the inside and getting everything set up and do my speed check. Sorry, I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see this very well, but just to show you, here is the cable coming in through the top up there in the attic. And then all that excess ethernet cable that I routed down there. And now I need to bring that over along with power. I'm going to go through this wall here and then start connecting everything up. Here is the ethernet going down within the wall cavity. And then here is my new Romex that will be feeding the receptacle that will power the Starlink unit.
So now we have all of our wires where we need them. And I'm putting most of the setup inside a closet. So it's just out of sight. So I have the power supply. I'm gonna have extra cables and cords here inside the closet. And then on the other side of the wall, in a nice centrally located open spot in the house, I have the Wi-Fi router positioned high off a shelf that I installed. That was the best setup that I could do since I'm coming top down through the attic. Now, if you're going bottom up through that rim joist, which is super common, you're gonna have a little different setup, but this is what I'm dealing with. So I'll take this old work two gang box and I have a low voltage side. I did have to modify it slightly on the low voltage side to get the cable through, but I am keeping the low voltage here on the one side and then my Romex and the receptacle on the other side. The one thing I'm waiting for, which they didn't have at the hardware store, is the low voltage insert. So you can put low voltage and high voltage in my area in the same box, but you do need to have that divider plate in there to keep those separated. Remember, if you're gonna be doing electrical work, it's on you, do it safely, know your local code, and maybe consult a professional if, you, if you're uncertain. So I'm reaching the home stretch here. I'm gonna get this all inserted in the wall and then power everything up and then do that speed check. Power is back on, I'm gonna check. And outlet tester says we're good. So now I have the black cable coming from the dish, white that's going out to the Wi-Fi router on the other side in the hallway that I showed you. So now I'll power this up. Should see those lights come on. Now your dish, remember that dish is not stationary, so it's gonna now establish itself and go through the initial initialization or calibration procedure where it's trying to find the best angle in terms of position of satellites currently. So once the Starlink unit has established that optimal position, you can run your speed check. As we outlined at the start of this video, three weeks back, I was at about 40 megabits per second download and about 10 to 11 megabits upload. And that was with a 40 millisecond latency. So I've ran several tests now. Here is one representative test and it has varied quite a bit. Now the bottom side, I'm at least 50 to 55 megabits per second on the download and then around 10 to 12 megabits on the upload with a very pretty consistent 38 to 40 second latency. Now I have seen all the way up to about 110 to 120 on the download speeds and all the way up to about 25 or 30 megabits per second on the upload speeds. So why is this and why do you see that wide variety of speeds? Now a really cool website if you want to kind of nerd out and dive deeper is satellitemap.space. This will actually show you in real time the position of all the Starlink satellites and you'll look around the world and see these strips, these lines of satellites. It almost looks like a glitch, like that can't be. It actually is. Those are fairly new flocks, 60 satellites that went up in a Falcon 9 rocket and have not went to their final destination. So they're still kind of traveling in the ribbon for which they were deployed from the Falcon 9. You can also focus in on your area and just see what kind of coverage you have. So I know that's a lot of details, probably more than what you guys want to know, but overall my current speeds have increased. It is now beating my Comcast 100 megabit download internet. So my plan is to test it out for a few more weeks to make sure it is a stable network. And once it is stable, cut the cord on Comcast and go full Starlink. If you have any questions because you got your Starlink and you're trying to install it, or you're just thinking through whether or not to go with Starlink, 
jump it out in the comments. We'll be in there, myself and many others, trying to answer those questions and help you along in your decision making or help you along with your install. And before taking off, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you around the house with your repairs and improvements. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.